the plot has escaped me. Hold on. Plot. Ah, okay. Hi everyone, it's Carrie, and this is probably gonna be another long video, so sit tight, grab a snack, do some stretching, clean your room, whatever you need to do. On Instagram, I asked you guys to send me your favorite films and or TV shows, and I would recommend something that reminds me of that in case you wanna get into reading and you just don't know what you might like. I always say try to jump into the same genre of things that you tend to like in other media. So we're gonna try that. However, so many of you guys like happy shows and I don't have a lot of happy books. So a lot of these are gonna be more thriller, fantasy, mystery, etc. As far as proper comedies, um, I don't read those. So, But we're just gonna jump in. I'm gonna try and briefly describe not only the show, but the book. Ready? Let's go. <laughs> so one thing that I found really funny is that almost all of the movies and TV shows that you guys like, they already come from books. They're already adaptations of books. Um, So some of them, I feel like you guys knew that, but for things like Legally Blonde, that was actually a book first. Um, and I'm thinking of doing a, another video about like little known book adaptations. Um, but one of the more popular ones that you guys asked for was Big Little Lies. And that is based off of a book and I actually loved the book so I'm going to recommend that and the other thriller by the same author. Big Little Lies is about a small town and all of these parents have kids that go to the same kindergarten. We learn that a crime has been committed, but the book tells it in such an interesting structure that you actually don't figure out what the crime is until the very end. Because of that, you don't know who's been affected by the crime, so you can't figure out who did it. It's like everyone in the town has a reason to hurt each other, and everyone in the town has a reason to be hurt by someone. But it was so interesting to read a thriller where I couldn't guess who done it because we didn't even know what was done. Um, so I definitely recommend that. And then also by Leanne Moriarty is a book called Nine Perfect Strangers, which I didn't love as much as I loved Big Little Lies. But if you're just looking for a like a summer thriller read, um, she knows how to write a good one. And this is of the same vein of Big Little Lies, like you know something really bad has happened, but it takes place in a like retreat, like this really yuppie healing retreat in the middle of Australia. And um, some bad stuff happens. So if you're looking for like an easy summer thriller, like sitting by the pool, whatever, Nine Perfect Strangers and Big Little Lies, for sure. I'm excited to talk about this one because I finished it last night. So a lot of people wanted something from Gossip Girl. Gossip Girl is a very popular TV show that takes place in a Upper East Side private school in New York City, Upper East Side. There is just one person who sends out these mass text messages, or I think they even have a website. I don't know. It was like early 2000s. As you might assume, <laughs> They just deliver gossip about everyone and so we kind of follow this group of students kind of like the upper echelon of this private school. We follow them throughout their life, throughout high school and then eventually throughout college and no one knows who Gossip Girl is. And so the book that I'm going to recommend is Ace of Spades and this, I'm pretty sure across the board everyone has said that it is a perfect mix of Gossip Girl and Get Out. And if you haven't seen Get Out, that is a horror film about a black man who goes to visit his white girlfriend's family's home. And um, it gets bad real fast. Like everything is not as it seems and it's even worse than you might guess. So try and mix that with Gossip Girl and you have Ace of Spades. Ace of Spades takes place at a very yuppie private school um, where everyone is very, very rich and very, very white, except for two students, Devon, I believe it's pronounced Devon, and then Chiamaka. I'm just gonna call them Vaughn and Chi because that's what they're usually called in the book. Chi is also really rich. Um, her mother is Nigerian, her father is Italian, and she's super popular. She has always been like the head prefect and everything, and her whole life is just about being number one so that she can go to Yale med school and be a doctor and kill it at life 
basically. And then we have Vaughn, who is a scholarship student. He lives with his single mother and his two brothers in a small house on the wrong side of town. And um, he just kind of keeps his head down. Nobody really knows him. And he wants to go to Juilliard um, as a pianist. And so he just practices music all day. Our book starts off on the first day of their senior year when all of a sudden these mass text messages akin to Gossip Girl start coming out and they are specifically targeting Vaughn and Chi and they have no reason to be attached to each other other than their race. I thought it was so good because the first half felt very just Gossip Girly and you were trying to figure out who was the person and the author kept dropping these hints that I thought were spoilers. I was like, oh man, she spoiled it. I know who it is. And then the next chapter, I'd be like, no, nope, I don't know who it is. And literally until the very end, when things start getting very, they take a turn, they take a turn. It all started piecing together and it made me so uncomfortable because I feel like it's not that far removed from reality. So I just thought it, you know, Gossip Girl is, vapid <laughs> but this um this was not this was not vapid at all i just highly recommend i read it in one day because it had me at the edge of my seat it was brilliant so ace of spades we're gonna talk about knives out i love knives out we're getting a knives out too i'm so excited my queen janelle monet is going to be in it it looks like another all-star cast i'm excited so knives out is a dark comedy i would say it is about this grandfather um who has built this murder mystery novel empire he's an author and so he's super rich and in the very beginning of this film he dies under very mysterious circumstances and so a detective is brought in to figure out what exactly is happening and things get really crazy when they decide to read his final will because where he decides to send his money uh shocks everybody it's very kind of agatha christie everybody seems guilty kind of thing daniel craig is the detective and he has this like ridiculous southern accent and he's just it's it's very good that is knives out and i've already talked about this book before in relation to knives out but it is the inheritance games and the second one and i believe it's two of two the second book is coming out in september so if you were putting off reading it because you just can't wait for a sequel um, maybe think about adding it to your list now. So The Inheritance Games is very similar to Knives Out in that we have our main girl who one day gets summoned to the reading of this billionaire's will. She's never heard of him before, um, but he has died and she has to physically be at the reading of the will or else they can't read it, you know? Um, so the family is kind of like, hey, we don't know you but could you come here so that we can get our money? And it's no spoiler to say that all of this billionaire's money goes to this random girl. And the only thing that she has to do to get the money is live in the family house for one year. The family is a mixed bag. Some of the family is pissed, understandably. Some of the family is like, whatever, grandpa's crazy anyway, so like, and then another is kind of like, we're gonna get on your good side so that you can give us our money. The family has three grandsons and they, we learn, have been kind of trained by the grandfather to look at everything as a game. Even their house has these weird like trick doors and like staircases that lead to nowhere. And so they kind of decide that this is just another one of grandpa's games. While our main girl is living in the house, just trying to like live her life, they are trying to unravel her like she they consider her a clue i don't know it just becomes this whole investigation the house is a mystery it's very ridiculous but fun very similar to knives out it is a young adult book but i had fun with it and i cannot wait for the second one i thought it ended in a really interesting way yeah i highly recommend the inheritance game we have a Tarantino. Someone asked for Once Upon a Time in Hollywood and describing the plot of a Tarantino film is so difficult. Once Upon a Time in Hollywood follows an actor and his stuntman and it literally just tries to capture the feeling of Hollywood in that era. I think, what is it? The 60s, the 70s? The golden age 
of Hollywood, right? People just like smoke a lot, drink a lot, and are attractive. Alongside of this storyline, the main actor's neighbor happens to be Sharon Tate, who, if you don't know, is one of the victims of the Charles Manson murders. Charles Manson had a cult. He sent some of his followers to murder this director and his wife and it was very tragic and Once Upon a Time in Hollywood kind of shares a fictionalized version of like what that night was like. And so if you're interested in that portion of the film, I would recommend reading The Girls, which is again a fictionalized look at the Charles Manson cult and it follows one girl who gets roped into it. It just follows like what is life like? How was she convinced to get into the cult? How did her life proceed from there, etc. It was very very interesting and if you're interested in like cults and specifically like Charles Manson and all that stuff. I thought it was very, a very interesting book. I think I, I read it pretty quickly. Definitely The Girls if you're into Once Upon a Time in Hollywood. This is timely because the second one is coming out soon, but a few people asked about The Quiet Place or A Quiet Place. This is a horror film in which the people cannot make sounds. <laughs> Basically, if you make any noises, it attracts these like monsters or aliens or whatever they are. I don't know. Why are you turning on? Of course, when I start talking about a horror film, that's when my air conditioner turns on all by itself. Great, okay. So um, anyway, the film is incredible because you are watching it and it is dead quiet the whole time. So I watched it on an airplane and I remember like being really tense and then they made an announcement like, please put on your seatbelts and I jump, like I hit the roof. <laughs> anyway, um, very interesting film. And I am going to recommend Annihilation, which is also a film, but this was a book, and I've said this so many times, I was genuinely frightened reading this book. Like I was disturbed and I had to put the book down a few times and kind of like reorient myself. Annihilation follows this one particular biologist who is sent on a mission with a few other women to go into this area X and no one knows what has caused it but something is wrong with this area and it's kind of spreading. It's almost like there's this force field around it and when they send people in like they've sent the military, they've sent other scientists, they've sent just random people, they've sent airplanes, they've sent drones, nothing comes back. <laughs> so she is part of another group that's gonna go in and figure out what's going on and it was very freaky. Um, so I think if you like that kind of eerie, like you're constantly on the edge of your seat and feeling very uncomfortable, um, I think you will like Annihilation. And I actually didn't finish the series because I was genuinely so scared, but just reading the first book was enough to kind of fulfill that need of being disturbed, I suppose. Um, so if you're that kind of person, there it is, Annihilation. Okay, next up, Inception. Okay, how do I describe Inception? Inception follows one particular man who has the ability to go into people's dreams. He has like made this technology that makes that happen. He is given a task to go in and plant an idea in someone's mind. And so he builds this team. It's kind of like a heist movie, except instead of stealing something, they're planting something. And if you haven't seen it yet, um, I definitely recommend it. Uh, it's kind of a classic at this point. And for me, for a book, I will recommend Paprika, which now that I'm thinking about it, has also been made into a film. But Paprika is about this psychologist um, who, again, there is this technology where you're able to go into people's dreams. She is not supposed to be doing this, but on her off time, she's kind of like a dream detective. So if someone comes to her and is like, you know, I'm, I'm suffering from insomnia, I can't fall asleep, or like I'm suffering from extreme depression, whatever it is, she will go into those dreams as this alter ego paprika. She will kind of help you remember. She will like kind of lucid dream you into finding the answers to your problems. Um, but this technology, if, oh my god, it turned on again. But if this technology falls into the wrong hands, some pretty bad things can happen. I think it's very similar, this idea of going into people's dreams and this line between reality and dream world. I enjoyed it. It did take me, like, I think one or two times to 
like get into it because it is like all of those layers is a little difficult but if you're into science fiction um i would highly recommend paprika this one was hard but um i hope I hope that this works. Somebody asked for the Heathers, and if you don't know what the Heathers is, I think, is that from the 80s or the 90s? It is kind of like Mean Girls, except there's a lot of murder involved. It's very dark. It's with Winona Ryder. Um, it is, there's a lot of croquet. I can't explain it very well, but it is a very dark uh, teenage movie from the 90s. And so I'm going to try and give you a mix. I want you with one eye, to read A Deadly Education, and with the other eye, to read The Click. <laughs> and then you have The Heathers. The Click, I'm actually, I'm not recommending this. These books are not good. But The Click books were about these rich girls that went to a rich private school, and then there was one girl who wasn't rich, and she joined in. Um, and it's about that. Uh, it's it's basically Mean Girls, um, essentially. If that element was put into A Deadly Education, I think you would have the Heathers. Um, a Deadly Education is about this magic school, and in this world there are these monsters that will feed off of magic. And so as a young magical person, as they get older, their magic gets stronger. And so when they're like a preteen, their magic becomes strong enough that the monsters can sell sense it and they will like kill them in order to get their magic and so the brilliant idea of this society is to make a school that is basically like like a prison it's like a glorified prison for these students and it keeps them safe from the monsters and then as they learn their skills once they're old enough to graduate hopefully that means that they're strong enough to defend themselves and so even though their magic is strong, the monsters can't kill them because they have trained. Does that make sense? And so even though this school was built to protect them, it is not 100% effective. They are constantly fighting these like little things that want to kill and eat them. Like they can't take showers very long because something's gonna come through the drain and eat them, you know? And then also other students. It's very dark, but it's very fun. And um, the second one is also coming out very soon and I'm excited for it. Um, so, A Deadly Education. <laughs> a lot of people asked about you. And this is also previously a book, but it is about a man who has very obsessive tendencies and he is able to kind of rope these women that he falls in love with into a relationship and he seems like the perfect boyfriend until he is not the perfect boyfriend. I only watched the first season um, but I am going to recommend The Silent Patient and The Silent Patient is about a woman who is in prison for murdering her husband and before she gets put on trial they want to get her to talk about it like what why did she do this did she really do it etc the only problem is she is not talking <laughs> she is literally mute and so they send in the psychologist to start working with her and to try and you know get her to speak and eventually they form a trusting relationship in which she's able to walk us through what is happening. She talks about, well, I don't want to tell you anymore. It's very eerie. If you're looking for a thriller kind of akin to you, um, I would highly recommend The Silent Patient. A lot of you asked about how to get away with murder, which I still haven't finished the first season. I don't know why, I'm like really putzing. How to Get Away with Murder is a show that takes place in a law school and the like main teacher is also a lawyer and so she takes on a bunch of different interns to help her with her cases and so kind of every episode is a different case but there's this overarching narrative of a murder is committed by the interns and they need to get away with murder, right? I am going to offer up the likeness which is a book i've talked about many times before but the likeness is part of the dublin murder squad series which does not need to be read in any order so technically this is the second one but you don't need the first one to get into it like there's no background needed this is one of the more like not super believable and ridiculous ones of this series but it follows our murder squad who has been given this case of a girl who has been killed they aren't really sure if her name is really her name they don't have 
any records on her, no family, nothing. It's like she doesn't really exist. The only info that they have is that she was living in this house with a bunch of her friends. They really keep to themselves, they're kind of weird. It just so happens that the lead detective on this case looks exactly like the victim. She, for some reason, is like her identical twin. So the group of friends don't know that their friend has died yet. And so they decide to just pop this detective into the house to like observe and and see if any of them are possible suspects. And she claims that she has amnesia. And so she's able to like not remember, like she'll forget where her room is or whatever, you know, it's kind of believable. I don't know, it, it feels a little bit like how to get away with murder. Like everybody in the house seems friendly, but also they're murder suspects. And it's just a little weird. And so I think um, if you are interested in how to get away with murder, there's a high possibility that you will also enjoy the likeness. So there you go. Okay, another film that is already based off of a book, A Series of Unfortunate Events. I am going to recommend, oh wait, I need to tell you what A Series of Unfortunate Events is about. Exactly what it sounds like, A Series of Unfortunate Events. It follows three kids who are orphaned and they are sent to live with their uncle, Count Olaf, and it's just horrible. Like, it's supposed to be kind of comedic. Um, I haven't read it in so long, but they were a really big part of my childhood, I remember. It's just creepy and eerie and, and Count Olaf is not a good dude. <laughs> So that's a series of unfortunate events. And I'm going to recommend The Slade House, which is a book I've mentioned that freaks me out. If you read a series of unfortunate events as a kid and now you're an adult, I think The Slade House might tickle your fancy. So The Slade House, we follow this particular home through many decades. Every once in a while, people will be walking down the street and they will find a door that they have never noticed before. And if they go in, they don't particularly come out. They never come out, they're never seen again. And so eventually we start to learn more about the house. And I really can't tell you any more. I would recommend it to anybody who likes kind of a horror story but definitely a series of unfortunate events people um try out the slade house okay a lot of people actually said juno or similar films like early to mid 2000s like kind of contemporary comedic films i don't have a whole lot of books like that <laughs> on my bookshelf. But this one book that I remember loving as a kid um, is All American Girl by Meg Cabot. And I believe Meg Cabot also wrote The Princess Diaries. So it's kind of of that same vein. All American Girl is about a girl who lives in Washington, DC. She is attending like an art class. She's just kind of like this, not like the other girls, you know, alternative girl. She walks out of art class one day and she sees this guy with a gun. I forget if she jumps in front of the guy or what exactly happens, but she stops an assassination attempt against the president and things go on from there it was just a good time like i think something like that would be a good summer read if you want just like an easy thing i think that's like the theme for meg cabot's books i would recommend if you were looking for something kind of akin to a silly young romantic comedy all american girl okay so many of you so many of you want to know buffy the vampire slayer which i'm gonna out myself here i have never seen but from what I gather, it's about a teenage girl who slays vampires. <laughs> I think that's a pretty good guess on my part. I'm going to recommend three books that I think would appeal to those who watch Buffy. Number one being Daughter of Smoke and Bone, which I talked about in one of my monthly reading wrap-ups. This was such a great series. It follows this one girl who is just like trying to go through art school. She's living in Prague. The only thing weird about her is that her hair is naturally blue and she's covered in tattoos and she's like super young. But other than that, life is very normal. Except for every once in a while she gets called back to visit good old dad, her like guardian. Not really her dad. It is Brimstone who is like this demony kind of character and she gets sent on all these missions by him to like go collect teeth 
so that he can do his weird magic and stuff. And we start to learn that there is a big rift between the like angels and these demons and the adventure goes on from there. We learn about our main girl's life. She has a very, very funny best friend that was my favorite character. I would highly recommend it to anybody who's interested in fantasy. I really loved it. It's got the spunk that I think Buffy has, so you might enjoy. Second up is Crescent City, which is much more adult, and it is about a girl in this world that has, like, demons and pixies and like all these mythical creatures. There is this like tragic thing that happens in the beginning and she has to solve this mystery and she ends up having to get the help of this like angel demon, like death angel guy. If you like Sarah J Mass kind of things, you will like this book probably, I think. And last but not least for Buffy is Ninth House by Leigh Bardugo. And this takes place in Yale where they do really have secret societies. Actually, Lee Bardugo was part of one when she went to Yale, fun fact. And so there are all these like clubs that you get initiated into and it follows a girl who is in one particular one. There's a lot of like necromancy involved, all these weird spells. I can't, it's it's very demonic. It's very dark. This isn't young adult. This isn't um, Lee Bardugo's first adult novel. It wasn't my favorite, but I think if I read it again, I would like it a lot more. I'm not explaining it well at all because to be honest, the plot was a little confusing to me. The ambiance, the aesthetic was there. And I think Buffy people think it appeals to y'all. So, Ninth House. Last two, wrapping it up. Gone Girl. So many said Gone Girl. So first of all, read the book Gone Girl. And then I'm also going to recommend The Girl on the Train. This girl rides the train to work every single day and she just looks out the window as one does and every time she goes past she can see into certain homes. The whole book is kind of about voyeurism. We're innocently just kind of watching somebody's life as you might if you're looking out the window and you can see someone in their home. She starts to notice that something very weird is happening in one particular house. There's a couple and one person in the couple just disappears and it doesn't seem like they broke up. It seems sinister. And so she kind of goes and starts to investigate it. Like she gets so invested in this that she gets involved and it's very Gone Girl-esque. Um, so if you're looking for a summer thriller, A Girl on the Train, I believe they also made that into a movie. There you go. And I'm also going to recommend Night Film, which the plot has escaped me. Hold on. Plot. Ah, okay. So the daughter of this famous director um, has committed suicide and the director is known for being a recluse. So like no one has seen him in a really long time. And this journalist decides that he is going to investigate it. It gets really creepy really fast. I remember reading it and being genuinely freaked out and it takes a lot of unexpected turns. So it's very Gone Girly and very, it was a good thriller. It was a good time. It wasn't my favorite, but I do not regret reading it. So night film. Okay. I'm losing my breath. So these are the last two. Criminal Minds. I have two books for you. Yes, I have seen a bit of Criminal Minds. The show did not age well, <laughs> but if you are interested in kind of CSI or criminal psychology, stuff like that, I'm going to recommend number one, The Alienist, which is also now a TV series. And it takes place at the turn of the century, the end, the late 1800s in New York City. And our main character is an alienist, which was the early word for psychologist. There is a serial killer on the loose and it's kind of the first time that we're noticing serial killers. He gets hired by the police to basically be a, what are they called? A profiler. He needs to look at these murders and be like, who are we looking for? Who would be doing something like this? And so I thought it was very interesting. It was one of my favorite books. I haven't read it in a long time, so I might have to update that, but I, definitely was drawn in. Again, if you're into criminal psychology, it was very interesting, very dark, but if you're into criminal minds, I think you can handle it. So the alienist. Last recommendation is The Black Hand. And this, I love this book. I talked about it in my true crime video, which I'll link above. 
Um, but it is about the Italian-American Sherlock Holmes, Joe Petrosino. He is, as I said, an Italian-American guy who is living in New York. I believe it's also in the, the 1800s. And he kind of enters into the police force and starts really changing things because historically the police were very, very Irish. The Italian immigrants came after the Irish. If there was ever a problem affecting the Italians, the police, like, they couldn't speak Italian, they didn't particularly care about this new wave of immigrants, so the Italian Americans were really suffering as far as, like, getting the help that they need. This guy, Joe Petrosino, enters the police force and he is, like, the Italian cop. <laughs> and he helps um, the entire community and it's so interesting. This is a non-fiction book, but The Black Hand is, I believe, a Serbian crime syndicate. They are just setting off bombs. If you don't pay them, they will blow you up. Like, you pay us to protect you, and if you don't, we do the opposite of protect you. It was, it was so interesting, and it, I learned so much that I didn't no. And as someone who does love true crime, I couldn't recommend this highly enough. The Black Hand. And that is it. That was very long. My throat is very sore. I apologize if I didn't talk about the ones that you asked for. It was actually a lot harder than I thought, especially because all of you guys like happy things, particularly if you have any recommendations for The Good Place or Gilmore Girls. Those were like the main two. Please recommend books down below. I'll put it as a pinned comment, in fact. Yeah, thank you so much. This was actually really fun. It was a challenge, but I enjoyed it. There were a couple others that I just didn't have time for. I'll shout them out right now. Sherlock, Black, uh, Murder on Black Swan Lane. I'm not gonna tell you what those are about, but they're similar. Lost in Translation, I would recommend After Dark by Haruki Murakami. Um, what else did I skip? Oh, and also Dark, the German very freaky TV show. It's on Netflix. It's so dark. I couldn't find anything that dark and I don't think I'd ever want to read anything that twisted. But I would recommend The Cloud Atlas because there is this kind of idea of soul and time travel and it doesn't... I've only watched the first two seasons of Dark, but it's nowhere near as dark as Dark. But um, you might like it. I don't know. That was the closest I could come. Anyway, um, I would love to try and do this again one time. Um, again, if you have any book video recommendations, please let me know. And I will talk to you guys next time. I am having a fantastic reading month, so I'm excited to talk to you about June. I will see you next Friday, okay? Okay, so talk to you later. Bye.